Yo, what's going on boys? So today I'll be running you through the 1014 mid lane Loki tier list. Of course, we had a new patch drop today. We saw some changes to Zed. Specifically, last patch we saw changes to things like Cogmore mid. Um, Nocturne got a slight change. But overall, this tier list, it's pretty stable. It's been pretty set in stone, um, honestly, for a while now. So we're going to kick it off in my, my god tiers, my S tiers. These actually haven't changed for a long time now, guys. I don't think anything in my A tier is quite pushing up into those S tiers. We saw a big change to Predator and Ghost today, further buffs. So this is going to help things out like Victor. Um, it's definitely going to help things out like Orianna still. Um, the Predator, not many mid laners run Predator. They're probably going to keep buffing it until it's insanely broken and then people catch on to it. I think Predator is actually pretty good right now on any, on Malzahar, even on Rumble it's pretty good. But right now it doesn't really pack a punch at all, especially in the early game, it kind of sucks. So I'm not really sure where they're going with that, but the ghost buffs are definitely relevant. Um, you're probably going to see a lot more of these Cassios, these Auris, these Syndra with the ghost um, as the patch progresses. The god tiers, we have Dina, Galio, Echo, Nocturne, Orianna, TF, Cassio, and Fizz. Pretty stock standard, guys. You've got some really good control mages. You've got some really good hard engaged champions. you got a lot of mobility in a couple of these kits. Um, you got a lot of like the globals, TF, Nocturne, Galio, very stable. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So moving down to my A tiers now, just talking about a couple of picks that are doing very well. We saw Zed. Got a pretty big buff to his W missile speed. It's going to be going much faster now and on a lower cooldown. We are almost back to what Zed was in Season 3 when he was just absolutely bonkers broken. Um, the biggest change from then and now is that back then when you ultimate... You could instantly tick back to your initial position. Now you have a 0.5 second delay. So when you alt, you can't instantly tick back. So there's a little bit of a downfall there. And the biggest change, of course, is people having stopwatch. That's the biggest change. That's why Zed's not as strong as he used to be way back then. I don't think we should aim to get him back to that stage. But right now, this W buff is going to be helping out his mobility a lot. Helping out his trades, helping out his all-ins, everything, to be honest. So will we see Zed pop up into pro, pro play? I still doubt it. Um, there's a lot of problems with Zed, man. Like, firstly, you have to be, like, literally getting solo kills. In pro play, that is, like, it's very, like, it's so rare that you see solo kills in pro play, especially at the highest of levels. Um, so, especially when you can go, like, things Seeker's Arm Guard and Stopwatch. Um, and then when you get into the late game, these AD carries, like, Aphilios just have Death Ants and will never die. It is very hard to pick these Assassins, but still, in solo queue, yes. I think there's definitely going to be more Zed pick this patch. I think that people should be looking to pick things like Lissandra, um, even Echo. I like Diana works well into this Zed. Um, Rumble works well because you can go early. Um, you can go early Seekers, get that armor in, and of course, early armor just demolishes any lethality that these champions pick. Like it just completely nullifies um, the lethality when you go that early armor. So, yes, Zed will be better, but I don't think he's going to be completely OP or busted, as some people on Reddit may have you believe. Um, what else do I want to touch on? I think that Silas is really steady, guys. I think he's a hard champion to play. You kind of need to know how to play every champion, right? That's the biggest problem. You've got to know how to use everyone's ultimate. But if the enemy team picks like Malphite, Ash, things like that, and you're like maybe fourth or fifth pick and you can see their comp, they have a zillion or something, a Silas is just game breaking. If you have Silas in your champion pool, 100% this thing can just completely change the game. Um, you can go Fleet Footwork for Sustain or Conqueror for Dueling. It really doesn't matter. Zoe's doing well. One of the better control majors. She has a lot of counters. Zed's going to be popping up more and more now. AP Cogmore mid all the way down to my C tiers. is a pretty good pick into Zoe. Um, Victor's going to be doing pretty good this patch, guys. The Ghost buff going to be helping Victor out. Syndra... She's actually not doing too well in solo queue. Everyone seems to think that Syndra is like just the be all and end all um, of like mid lane control mages, but I think that Orianna is better at the moment. I seriously think she offers more. I think that Syndra's lack of kind of mobility and survivability, unless you go for items, is the biggest downfall to this champion. There's a lot of good counters at the moment to Syndra, so you gotta be careful when picking it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still a decent pick. It's in that great A tier for a reason. I think Lissandra's being slept on still. I think Rumble's being slept on still. Katarina, you got to be an OTP. Um, Kiana's a great Roma. LeBlanc, uh, I'd be very careful in picking LeBlanc. The champion is super hard. You can snowball, yes, and take over the game, but the scaling's not very good. Farming is kind of hard. Side landing, you split pretty slow. 
Um, overall, LeBlanc's okay, but definitely not S tier. And let me know in the comments if you guys think any of these A or B tiers should be in the S tier or some champion should come down. Um, I think that tier lists overall are very um, subjective to who's making them. Like, if I were really to put my my bias on this, I'd put Talia a lot higher. Um, you know what I mean? I put a lot of champions a lot higher on my specific opinion, but this is kind of like overall on the win rates, the play styles that's kind of in the meta right now where I think things should be. So maybe, yes, youth might think AP Cogmore, you saw Caps go 15 kills or whatever. He's S tier. The problem with a lot of, a lot of these picks is Cogmore is really good into mid to long range mages that can't really like get onto you. So Cogmore is really good into things like Azir. Um, I like him into things like Cassiopeia or Rise that have a very short range. But if you're playing that Cogmore to things like Zed, if you're playing into things like Cassidin, like it's over for you. And that's why it's not an S tier pick. Nunu mid, guys. I did a video a couple of days about Nunu mid. I think it's a very, very potent pick. Into immobile champions. If you pick Nunu mid, the enemy picks Singed. The Singed can put his little goo on the ground and you instantly stop. And Nivia can block you with her own wall. Nunu's good, but you can't pick it every game. You can't blind pick it. You'll have a very bad time. I think Nunu mid does very well into immobile champions. I think you can play um, a really nice Nunu mid into things like Zoe, into things like Oriana, TF. They all work. They all work very well. But if the enemy champion has some type of mechanic to either dodge the snowball consistently like an Echo, you're probably not going to have a good time. So you got to be pretty careful in when to pick it. Um, Azir does pretty good in solo queue. I think if you want a control mage, I don't see why you'd pick Azir when you can pick Oriana or Syndra or Victor. I don't see why you'd pick it. It's so much harder. It's more inconsistent. You have a lot more mana problems. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it at all. Aurelian Soul is a champion that needs to be OTP'd. I think you need 100 plus games before your win rate starts to. Like the, the learning curve is so high for this champion that you got to just put so many hours into it. I wouldn't recommend. Cho'Gath mid, I think is really really underrated. Cho'Gath mid lane, there's a couple of high elo Korean players who play it. I believe they go like pseudo tank. They go maybe like protopult. Pro no, they go, maybe they go GLP into spooky ghosts. Some of them go protobelt into death cap. Like it, it's an AP setup build and you will one shot people. Um, but you got to be careful when picking it because into a mage, like a Syndra, like they're just going to bot, like they're going to completely demolish you in the early game. So you need to be careful of that. Um, did I miss any... Thing on my B tiers. That's about it for my B tiers. I do think Ari is good. It's solid. But once again, there's so many better picks to be had. And in my C tiers, guys, my not optimals, the Cogmore's there. I love Cogmore. I played like 30 Cogmore games straight of AP Cogmore. And overall, champion's really good. Level 11, you really come online. You counter these champions like that Azir I mentioned earlier. Um, but you got to be careful when picking it into Assassins. Things like the Echo, things like the Fizz, things like the Cassidin. You're really not going to have a good time. You're going to get outscaled. You're going to get all in. You don't really have that much mobility. Um, it's pretty much a bad time when you play Cogmore without seeing the enemy comp. Pike mid got a bit of a nerf this patch. It was only a slight nerf. They kind of want to bring him out of the mid lane and put him back into the bot lane. There's a couple of Pike OTPs that play at mid lane on the mo at the moment. There's a guy in EU West who's... I think he hit Challenger just with a 70% win rate. And there's a guy in Korea who also hit Challenger with around about 65% win rate, OTP Pike mid only. Um, but at the end of the day, it's an OTP champion. The lane isn't very strong. You, like the Korean guy that played Pike mid, he was averaging three CS per minute. Built mobility boots, perma roamed. I think that works well in Korean high elo or Korean games in general. But if you're playing a North American game and you play that Pike play style, you're not going to have a good time because you're going to get people leads and then you're just going to, they're going to do nothing with it. They're going to sit back, do nothing. And then you're going to have like 50 farm at 20 minutes when the enemy mids just sat there farming. They'll have a better team fight. So you got to be careful. Um, and you, get, you always got to be aware of what the strengths are of specific champions and play towards them. So maybe some regions play a lot differently than others. So I think Pike definitely, look, it's a decent pick. But at the end of the day, it definitely works for a high tempo play style. Perma roaming, um, perma looking for picks, a lot of fighting, a lot of action definitely benefits Pike. So... Um, just be careful when picking it. Moving down, we have things like Rise. Very at the end of the day, I don't know why you'd pick Rise, man. There's so many better mages. Yasuo is good, especially if your enemy picks like things like Gragas. But the problem with Yasuo, we all know, is 
You need so many games to play him well and consistent. A lot of players can do 20, 30 Yasuo games and they can pop off on him. But then the next game they go 0 10. Next game they go 0 10. Next game they go 20 0. Next game they go 0 10. You won't climb like that. You'll have fun, but you won't climb. And that's the same for Akali, same for Irelia. It's inconsistencies that really hurt these champions um, because it depends on the enemy comp all the time. If they have hard CC, they have Lissandra, they have Malzahar, you're playing these picks. It's like, well, this game's just completely written off because they have these specific picks. Whilst in contrast, if you pick Orianna, it's good every goddamn game. The key to climbing, guys, I've, been, I've, like, I've said this for so long, it's consistency. I don't care if you can go 100-0. It's about going, putting solid performances back to back to back. That's all it's about. You want to average above a 50% win rate, put your damage in, play very safe and controlled, play your own champion pool that you know how to play, dodge bad champion selects, you'll climb. 10-14, boys. Set yourself a goal for this patch. Try and hit it. Pick your strongest champions that you can. Learn the shit out of them. Watch some VODs. Watch your own VODs and improve. So hopefully that's helped you climb for this patch, guys. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.